Introduction to Chemical Kinetics and Factors Affecting Reaction Rates. Okay, so let's talk about what chemical kinetics is first. And basically, it's the study of chemical reaction rates. And a more simple way to describe it is how the concentration of a given reactant or product changes in time during a chemical reaction. Now, in kinetics experiments, these we're going to change reaction conditions in a systematic way. And then we're going to measure the effect on the rate of reaction. And we can measure reaction rates using a variety of spectroscopic methods. That's the most common way. Now, kinetics provides a way to study complicated reactions and figure out how they proceed. And if we can figure out how a reaction proceeds, or you know, if we have a mechanism that is supported by experimental evidence, we may be able to learn how to manipulate it and control it to adjust the amount of product that we get from that reaction. Kinetic studies basically provide evidence and support for a theory about how a reaction works, and we call that its mechanism. Now, we can never prove a particular mechanism, but we can experimentally support it. All right, so now we're going to talk about two aspects of kinetics throughout this whole section. And the first is the macroscopic aspect. And so this is going to be how fast reactions run overall. And from these experiments, we're going to be able to derive rate laws from kinetics experiments. And rate laws just show the dependence on concentrations and or partial pressures of reactants. Now, the microscopic aspect of reactions involves how the reaction proceeds at the molecular level. And so this is what I was talking about earlier with a reaction mechanism. And as we're going to see later on, a reaction mechanism includes a series of elementary steps in going from reactants to products. And we call that a reaction mechanism. Now, I'll show you an example right now. So here's an SN1 reaction and an example of one. So here's T-butyl bromide. And we're going to react it with methanol. We're going to boil the reaction mixture. And in the end, we're going to get methyl T-butyl ether and hydrogen bromide. This looks like a very specific reaction, you know, where we actually have specific reactants and specific products. But it's actually in a huge category of reactions called first-order nucleophilic substitution reactions. So that's an example of a reaction mechanism, and a large number of reactions fit into that category. So here is the mechanism for this particular reaction. So this is an example. So we can see the first step is slow. And basically, we're going to form a carbocation and a bromide anion. Okay. In the second step, which is fast, then a lone pair on the oxygen is going to bond with that carbocation. Okay. And we're going to have this protonated species here. In the last step, these electrons are going to go back on oxygen and, and another methanol is going to come and take that hydrogen, that proton. And in the end, we're going to end up with methyl T-butyl ether, okay, and this protonated methanol molecule. So that's an example of a mechanism. Now, one thing I want to point out on this is the slow step determines the rate of the entire reaction. So in this case, the first step determines the rate of the reaction. These two happen very, very fast after that. When we think about kinetics, we also think about collision theory. And basically, it offers the framework for understanding chemical kinetics. The basic assumption in collision theory is that molecules must come into contact to react. So they have to collide to react. So the forward reaction rates are affected by several factors. And I put forward in parentheses because there are backward reaction rates also. We'll see a little bit of that later on. But in general, we're going to be looking at forward reaction rates. So the first thing that affects reaction rates is concentration of the reactants. And basically, if you have a higher concentration, it's going to lead to a faster rate 
because there are more collisions. It's more likely that molecules will collide if they are in larger concentration. Another factor is temperature. Higher temperature leads to more collisions. The molecules have more kinetic energy. They collide with greater energy, and that leads to a faster rate. Another factor is the physical state of the reactants. So molecules have to come into contact, so they need to mix in order to react. So solutions provide more opportunities for mixing, for colliding. So another factor that affects the reaction rate is the amount of surface area if one of the reactants is a solid. And so, for instance, nanoparticles have more surface area than larger particles, so that would affect the reaction rate more surface area means a faster rate. Another factor is the addition of a catalyst. Now this usually changes the mechanism of reaction. Catalysts speed up reactions and enzymes are an example of a biological catalyst. And an example is trypsin which acts as a catalyst in biological systems. All right, next we're going to talk about reaction rates and how they change with concentration.